Welcome, and today we are going to discuss USB connectors and try to untangle the confusion that surrounds them. There is a certain amount of irony that the most popular connector in the world can be so difficult to understand, but we'll work from the basics and catch you up to speed. USB is short for Universal Serial Bus, a communication system that is used to transfer data between components in a system. A serial bus, in this case, transmits data one bit at a time over a single wire. With USB, however, you can also transmit power, something that has been utilized more and more over time. Actually, when USB was first introduced in 1996, it was just intended to replace the variety of serial and parallel options and their many proprietary connectors. At 1.5 megabits per second, which was around 3 to 20 times faster than options available at that time, USB provided both a faster option and a single unified connector. The newest USB 4 standard is now up to 80 gigabits per second and with USB power delivery, can also transfer up to 240 watts. So those original numbers don't seem quite as impressive anymore, but they were a big deal back then. There are three separate aspects of USB that have become standardized and improved over time. First was the unified connector, the type A connector that has become absolutely ubiquitous, though over time, additional types of connectors have been created, such as the type B mini and micro connectors, as well as the type C in more recent years. Second was the data transfer speed, which obviously did not jump immediately from 1.5 megabits per second to 80 gigabits per second, but increased by stages. Finally, the power transfer, which started as a simple side benefit and now is a standardized feature. Let's go through these three different aspects individually. First, the connector. Here in front of me, I have quite a few different examples, and I want to explicitly state now that the standards for the physical connectors are related, but are not the same as the protocol standards that dictate the speed. Technically, you can run USB protocols through non-USB connectors and cables, much as you can run non-USB protocols through these connectors and cables. With that, let's go through these different connectors. On most of these, you can see on at least one end of the cable, we have the type A connector. This is the original shape and arguably still the most common connector. It plugs into the host, usually a computer, and generally has a different type of connector on the other end for the peripheral. The color of the plastic also gives us an idea of what generation of protocols this connector can support. White means generation one, black supports generation two, blue is for generation 3.0 with teal for 3.1. These colors are not hard and fast rules, but just general guidelines that manufacturers tend to follow. On the other end of this cable, you can see type B, which is most often associated with printers and other large peripherals. These never became as popular and have largely been replaced with their mini and micro versions that you see here. You can still see this mini type B version on occasion, but it has almost entirely been replaced by the slightly smaller and much more robust micro version. At the moment, this is the most common USB connector for peripherals, but it is slowly being phased out by an even better option. Type C is the newest USB physical connector interface that has a reversible and symmetrical design that can be inserted with either side up and can also be plugged into any USB C device using either end of the cable. As they're being introduced, it is very common to see Type A on one end and Type C on the other but that is due to needing to be backwards compatible, not any inherent needs of the Type-C connectors. And while this is the first time the physical connectors aren't backwards compatible, they are backwards compatible with all protocols, from the newest USB 4 standards to the oldest 1.1 signals. It is even compatible with Thunderbolt signals. And while we'll talk about power delivery more in a bit, Type-C allows much higher voltage and current than previous cables, with up to 48 volts and five amps, giving us up to 240 watts of power transfer. There were a few other USB connector types, such as the mini A connector for hosts with limited space, the mini AB connector that could be connected to either a mini A or mini B, as well as the micro A, B, or AB super speed connectors that were used for super speed connections for a short period of time. These physical standards never became very popular, so for the sake of time, we won't cover them in further detail. Instead, let's talk about the protocols. Up to this point, we've been talking about the types of physical connectors, but separate from those are the USB communication standards, which define the data transmission speed, handshake protocols, and even the power supply specifications between the devices that are connected. The interesting part of this is that improvements are being made so quickly, it's very possible that by the time you're watching this, the standard is even faster. 
Leave a comment below of what the latest and greatest standard is, and we can watch the evolution over time. In the beginning, the protocol started at USB 1.0, but as of now, the newest standard is USB 4. Moving from USB 1.0 to USB 2.0 was pretty straightforward. USB 1.0 was capable of 1.5 megabits per second, called low speed, which was quickly upgraded to USB 1.1, which could operate at 12 megabits per second, called full speed. With the move to USB 2.0, it was called high speed USB as we were now seeing transfer rates up to 480 megabits per second. But then the naming convention for USB 3 got somewhat confusing. Originally, the very first USB 3 standard was referred to as USB 3.0 or USB 3.1 Gen 1 or super speed USB 5 gigabits per second. And then they changed their minds and now it's called USB 3.2 Gen 1. That's four different names for the same protocol. It's very easy to see how someone can get confused. But now with the latest naming convention, we have the USB 3.2 Gen 1, which is five gigabits per second, USB 3.2 Gen 2, which is 10 gigabits per second, and then USB 3.2 Gen 2 by 2, which is 20 gigabits per second. If you look around the internet, you will still find references to the older naming conventions. And if you're confused, I recommend using our History of USB Standards blog as a reference to compare the legacy names with the current names. Fortunately, USB 4 was introduced in 2019, and it supports multiple speed tiers at 20, 40, and now 80 gigabits per second. And hopefully we'll be able to leave the whole USB 3 naming mess behind us. As I mentioned, the types of connectors and the USB protocols are related, but separate. Type A connectors can support up to USB 3.2 Gen 2, but to get the faster USB speeds, such as USB 3.2 Gen 2 by 2 and USB 4, you will need to use the USB type C connectors. With that out of the way, let's talk about the last aspect of USB, which is power delivery. Originally, USB only provided enough power to run small electronic devices, such as mice or keyboards. But as smartphones and other electronics became both more prevalent and power hungry, designers have been using USB more and more for its charging capabilities. An effort has been made to standardize the transmission of power into what is now called the USB power delivery or USB PD standard. With a type C connector, USB PD can provide a variable voltage which for power delivery 3.1 includes mini voltage levels between 5 and 48 volts. This with a maximum current of up to 5 amps gives us up to 240 watts of power. In addition to that, power direction is no longer fixed with either the host or the peripheral supplying the power. For example, this means that a laptop with USB-C could either charge or be charged by a large battery bank. Power management can also be optimized across multiple peripherals, so different peripherals receive different voltages. There has to be an IC in the devices capable of having this discussion though, and if the devices don't have a successful digital handshake, then the system reverts to the 5 volt 1 amp standard. The fun thing is that at these higher power levels, USB connectors become useful enough at transferring power that they can be used in applications that solely need power. As reducing the number of different connectors needed saves money and eliminates e-waste, this is a significant benefit for all consumers. At CUI devices, we actually carry a range of power only USB type C connectors for designs where charging or power is the sole function. In the mid nineties, I don't think many people knew how popular USB would grow to be. It has continuously evolved while maintaining backward compatibility and has been heavily adopted throughout the globe. The European Union has even made it a law that all future mobile devices are required to use USB type C for their connectors to reduce e-waste and save money. Between high speed data transfer, standard and common connectors, and now high power transfer, this incredibly flexible standard has proven itself over and over. Whether designing for the future, interfacing with legacy products, or just trying to figure out which USB hub to buy, understanding the capabilities of USB will help everyone make better decisions about which USB will work for them. If you have any more questions about USBs or want to see the most up-to-date information about the different USB protocols or connectors available, check out our interconnect blogs on cuidevices.com.